Yesterday we spoke about the victory of Makkah and how victory came to the Muslims after it seemed as if or it seemed as though they had struck an agreement that was very unfair against them. But this is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where sometimes something negative happens to us but it is the opening of so many positive doors. Like we said, when one door closes, another 10 doors open by the will of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this in the Quran for many reasons. One of them is for us to draw a lesson that in our lives, for as long as we are trying to adopt the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and for as long as we are trying to please our maker, nothing negative can actually happen to us. Whatever happens, even though it may sadden us if we lose, for example, a child or we lose something material, but deep down we would know this was the will of Allah. It could not have been any worse. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, really. Sometimes Allah wants to give us paradise by closing certain doors for us, which would result in us going through a phase of sabr and endurance for the sake of Allah. And during that phase, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes so pleased with us that he says, for you is paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the sahaba radiallahu anhum whom he was pleased with. Imagine if someone had to tell you, you are guaranteed a place in paradise. How would you feel? If someone were to tell you, you are guaranteed a place in paradise. How would you feel? This is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he told those whom he knew, had they been told they would be from amongst those who would work harder to achieve an even higher place in paradise. And like us, if we were told that, one wonders if we would still come for salah. It's a reality. One wonders if we would obey Allah's instruction or we would say, right, I've reserved my place. I can now do as I please. Nay, those were the ones whom Allah had mentioned how pleased he is with them and it made them even more steadfast. When the rumor spread that Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu was murdered in Mecca, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was in, on the outskirts of Mecca with his companions, they had no weapons as such, but they pledged allegiance. They pledged to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam under a certain tree. Now the tree is known as Shajarat al-Ridwan, the tree of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They pledged under the tree that we will fight back even if we lose our lives. Because if one from amongst us is murdered, we will all stand up and make sure that we go forth and we defend and retaliate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw their dedication. He knew there was going to be no war. He knew that that was just a rumor. This is why it's important, my brothers and sisters, for us to clarify and verify before doing things. At this particular time, they did not just go into war. They pledged. That pledge was a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to see from amongst them who is ready to sacrifice for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were all ready. All of them. Approximately 1400 of them. Subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent verses sent verses explaining how he is pleased with them and how as soon as they struck that pledge they immediately achieved the comfort and the peace in their hearts listen to verse number 18 of surah al-fath allah says لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has become pleased upon those believers who pledged under the tree who pledged with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or to him under the tree on that particular day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what was in their hearts. So he granted them a special peace from him and he gave them news of a victory that would come very, very soon. Subhanallah. Look, the dedication. And from this we learn if we have a problem, if we have issues in life, 
for as long as we remain steadfast, a day will come when the victory would stare us in the face and we would walk straight through the doors of victory by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the reason I make mention of this verse is to show how when Allah sees what is in your heart, he then gives you the peace. He then gives you the contentment that you are looking for. So it's about time we cleansed our hearts and we realized who comes first? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes even before myself. And then we have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They come even before ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the peace that we are searching for. The next surah is known as Surah Al-Hujurat, named after the rooms. And this surah is very, very important for every one of us to know. It has in it the ingredients of peace. And I'm going to pick up a few of the points that are made mention of in this beautiful surah, known as Surah Al-Hujurat. The point number one that I want to raise is to verify information. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu in jaakum fasiqun binaba'in fatabayyanu fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bijahalah fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimeen. O you who believe, verse number six of Surah Al-Hujurat, when a sinner comes to you with news, then verify it. And one of the tafsirs explains that when someone comes to you with any news of someone else, by virtue of them having come to you talking about another person, they are already sinful of backbiting. So be careful. So there are two different translations of this. The term fasiq, it would either mean when a sinner comes to you or it would mean when someone comes backbiting to you, they're already sinful. So watch out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may he make us from those who do not carry tales from here to there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us. I mean, so Allah says, when a person comes to you with news, a sinful person comes to you with news, verify it, especially when it is news about someone else, authenticate it. Ask yourself, is it something that I really need to know? Does it bother me or affect me? If it doesn't, leave it because it does not concern you. Min husni islam il mar'i tarkuhu ma la The sign of the good submission of a Muslim is that he leaves that which does not concern him. So if you leave that which does not concern you, you achieve a lot of peace. The minute you involve in that which does not concern you, you will find yourself suffocating regarding that which definitely does concern you. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. We need to verify. Why verify? Because if you don't do that, you may be regretting your deed or your action or your reaction to that particular news regarding an innocent person later on. You find out, you know what, this person was innocent, but you went around, you believed the stories that came to you, you spread the rumor. So who is to blame? Allah warns us in Surah Al-Hujurat, what a powerful verse. It affects every single one of us without a single exception. We need to be careful because today, we are in the age of little mobile phones where a small thing happens and next thing we are indeed from amongst those who spread it. The bare minimum is we forward it. But did you find out? Did you verify? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good, good, goodness in the dunya and the akhirah. Remember, if there is good news about someone, you can always try and spread it. But if there is bad news before you spread it, make sure you have found out and make sure you verified. And if it does not concern you, leave it. Do you know there was a time and there was a time up to not very long ago when, when people or if people were told of something bad about someone else. Let's take the example of someone saw another person in a pub. We won't ask what they were doing there, but they saw the person. Okay. Now that they saw them in the pub, they would rather make a dua for them a long time ago. They would make a dua, Ya Allah, this man, I saw him walking in there. Ya Allah, guide him, help him, open his doors, help him stay away from it. This is the genuine Islamic feeling. But today it is the opposite. As soon as you see them, oh, we're on Facebook. Subhanallah, we're on Twitter. What else are we on? BBM and WhatsApp and Line and Tango and what else? 
line, subhanallah, I can name you another 20 different platforms. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. One is called WeChat and the other one is called Kakao and everything else. May Allah protect us. Really? What do we chat about? People in the pub. For what? So if we are genuine mu'mineen, when you hear bad news about someone, the first thing you say, Ya Allah, I don't believe this. But if it is true, Ya Allah, guide them, help them, open their doors, protect them from the devil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us the angels make a dua for you to say, Ya Allah, protect this person and his progeny from the same. This is why when we are quick to talk about the children of others, take a careful look at your own children around the table and say, Ya Allah, I'm not immune to what I said about the children of that man. Remember that. You want to get excited because someone else's child did something wrong. And you want to spread the tale. Remember, a day will come when on other tables, people will be discussing your child. So may Allah protect us. This is why we say, let us return back to the ingredient of peace. You want peace? Stop spreading things. Make dua rather. Make a prayer. Say something good. Ya Allah, this sister, for example, she's not dressed appropriately. Rather than going across the globe, hey, did you check that guy's for a woman? You know what? Did you see how she's dressed? What are you doing looking there? Allahu Akbar. One day there was a man who came back from a wedding and he says, you know, I went to the wedding. You should have seen the way they were dressed and you should have seen how the husband came in helicopter and you know, the wife, she came in a Bentley and this happened and that happened. And you know, they had a total free for all with music and dancing and everything. And this man bearded and we looked at him and we said, but what were you doing there? So sharp. He says, well, if I didn't go, who would have told you? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Really. We need to know, what were you doing looking? Make dua for them. Really, tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, this sister, for example, does not yet have the strength to dress appropriately. Grant her the strength in that regard and grant me the strength in so many other things that I am weak where you have actually covered me up. May Allah grant us this genuine feeling for one another. We will go very far in life if we return to that. We need to love one another. You see a person with a weakness, Wallahi, you say, Ya Allah, help him. Ya Allah, guide her. Ya Allah, guide me as well. And automatically, when you make a dua or say a prayer for someone else, the angels are saying, Oh Allah, grant him or her the same. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May he open our doors. You know, we don't want to be from amongst those who play the fool with this type of dua. Because if we are then cursing an innocent person, like we've said in the past, the curse is actually upon us. Because that person is innocent, they don't deserve it. It rebounds to us, we are affected by it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. There was a man who was told, obviously this is on a lighter note, that you know you have three wishes. Whatever you wish, your enemy will get double. So he said, wow, okay, I'd rather not wish because if he's going to get double, then I'm going to lose. Then he says, no, 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 I've got a plan. So he says, okay, first wish. I want a house like this, 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 and he described the house. In no time he had the house. His enemy across the road had a house double the size. So a while later he comes back and he says, my wish number two. I wish that I get so much in terms of gold and silver and whatever. In a little while it was there. And what happened? His enemy had double that. Then he tells this, he says, you know what? Scare me half to death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah grant us goodness. May Allah open our doors. Imagine, this is how we think. We cannot see others progress in life. We become so hard that even if you have whatever you are wishing, sometimes we are so weak that we have whatever we wish for, but we do not wish even a drop of it for someone else. Why is this the case? This is why we don't have peace. This is why we lose the comfort. This is why we cannot sleep at night except with sleeping pills. Because we might have everything, but we are not happy for our brother to have even more than us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. Let's move to the next point. We have disputes amongst us. Sometimes you will have a little dispute where a, a, a deal went sour, a misunderstanding occurred, something happened. Allah tells us in this particular verse, verse number 10 of Surah Al-Hujurat, Indeed, all believers are part of one family. They are brothers and sisters. So, how does the verse end? So, 
strive to resolve the disputes between the two of you who are fighting one another or who are quarreling with one another in order that you may achieve the mercy of Allah. If you want to achieve mercy, strive to resolve the problem between two people who are not getting along or who have a problem or who, for example, are fighting one another. If you are prepared to genuinely help them to get back by the will of Allah, it will be the ingredient of you achieving peace. Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So that you collectively can achieve the peace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, and let's be honest, when we see two brothers fighting, we are happy. Yeah, just as well. Yeah, that was good. It was expected. Now they can fight, you know. And we'll go say, no, that guy was wrong. You need to fix him. Show him. You know, this is the attitude we have. That's why we don't have peace. It's a reality. People get happy when others are fighting. They say it's about time. We were waiting for it. Why? Why don't we get upset when we see two people fighting? We say, you know, my brother, no matter what it is, you can solve it. A problem cannot be worth more than a certain amount. Or if you are wrong, admit it. Mend your ways. You know, today I was saying to some people that let's learn to forgive. So immediately someone said, how can I forgive someone? when they keep on repeating the same thing. That's true. You cannot forgive someone who keeps repeating the same thing. But when we say forgive people, we are saying forgive those who are asking you to forgive them. Someone's come to you and they are ready to mend their ways and they will not do it again. And they are serious about it and they say, we are sorry. In that case, open your heart, open your arms, embrace and realize that Allah has given you this opportunity to show that you too have a beautiful quality in you. But we are not talking about those who, are, who have not given up their bad ways. They are oppressing us day and night. How can we just say, forgive them? If that's the case, we promote criminal, criminal behavior and we're promoting people to oppress one another and we keep on saying, just forgive and forget and forgive and forget. Remember, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It cannot last forever. Somewhere, somehow it needs to stop. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. The point here is, we need to resolve our matters. Let us not start a dispute. When a brother has done something, try and look for an excuse for that particular brother or sister to say, no, they did not intend it today. Say you agreed with someone to pick you up at 11 o'clock and they don't, they don't come, not at all. And they come at half past 12 and you say, you know what? They did it purposely. That thought is from the devil himself. Who are you to start reading the hearts of people? In fact, you should say perhaps they were late. Whatever excuse he presents, I'm going to accept it and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who try to read the hearts of people because that is what causes bigger problems. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us something very serious. Ya amanu, O you who believe. We claim to believe, don't we? May Allah grant us true belief. May He make us the believers. La yaskhar qawmum min qawmin asa an yakunu khayram minhum. Do not ridicule or tease one another, lest the one you are ridiculing may be better than you. So people go and they say, you know, they tease others, they ridicule them, they, they make a mockery of them. Allah says, perhaps those whom you are trying to mock might be better than you. And another verse of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in fact, immediately after that, He says, the women as well, be careful, do not mock at one another. A group from amongst you should not mock at another because they might be better than you in the eyes of Allah and you don't know. And if we do that, or if we engage in this type of mocking, it will result in the snatching away of our own peace. This is why sometimes we are struggling, suffering. Why? We are the ones who ridicule others. We tease them. We make a joke out of them. And in return, we lose our own contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may He protect us from this type of behavior. Then He continues to say, وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not insult one another, even jokingly. The verse says, do not insult one another. But we here are saying, even jokingly, if we insult one another, you swear one another, wallahi, it results in hatred. It results in enmity. And even if we joke, some people jokingly, they call each other with a swear word. It happens. When they want to call you, they, they use three, four swear words and you're laughing because you think it's a joke. A day comes when it will go into the heart. It pierces and they get irritated. And then the, the friendship breaks. Why? Because we were foolish. How can you insult one another, even jokingly? How can you call each other bad names? That's the next, type, the next part of the verse. 
ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب Don't call each other with offensive nicknames. It's prohibited, completely prohibited to call each other offensive nicknames. Perhaps we are all guilty at some stage of calling someone a name that they don't like. May Allah protect us. We have a little nickname at the back of our minds for people. Because we don't like them, we've got a bad nickname. And sometimes because of their shape or size, we call them something else. And sometimes they have no option but to like it because everybody calls them that. So if you are called fatty and you don't mind being called fatty, then alhamdulillah. But if you mind it, wallahi, you, you, you should be minding it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's something that does not describe goodness, really. May Allah protect us. When you want to choose a nickname, choose a beautiful one. And remember, if you do not want to be called what people are calling you, do not respond to that name ever. Your name is Abdullah and they want to call you. There you are. Did you hear it? <laughs> Duli, Allahu Akbar, or Dula. May Allah protect us. Abdullah is the servant of Allah. Yes, if you do not like the name, obvious, I would say, do not settle for such a name because your parents have given you such a powerful name which has in it the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You might not be upset with the fact that people shortened your name, but the fact that Allah's name is in your name, keep it full. Allahu Akbar. Think about that. Think about it. So now what happens when people say Duli, you keep on walking. They say Duli, keep on walking. And then a little while later they say Abdullah. Then you look back They say yes, they'll get the message. That's the way. And that's how it should be done. And I've given you one example. But if you have a beautiful nickname, it is a sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He used to give his wives some beautiful nicknames and they loved it because these were nicknames that had nice meanings, you know. So the same applies to us. Sometimes, you know, people don't even call their wives with nicknames, you know. They just say, call your mother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah grant us goodness. It happens all the time. And some people say, you know, it's a form of respect. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had beautiful names. Beautiful names for even for Aisha radiallahu anha. You know how we would say rosy cheeks. Subhanallah. He used to call her Humaira, which has a similar meaning. Allahu Akbar. Imagine. Imagine. Even the men are blushing, mashallah. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. The point being raised, do not insult one another even jokingly. Do not call each other with names that, that are offensive. Not at all. May Allah protect us. Then Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا جَتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الظَّنِّ O you who believe, abstain, stay away from bad suspicion or negative assumption. We already spoke about it a little bit, but I can touch on it again. When we assume something negative, a brother is walking past and we say, you know what, this guy is reading salah without wudu. For what? It's such a dirty thought. It shows that you perhaps might be doing that. May Allah protect us. You know, a sister is walking in the middle of the night and you say, eh, she's got bad intentions. Why? She could have just gone through some heavy ordeal that you don't even know about. May Allah protect us, brothers and sisters. May Allah protect us all. Have a good assumption, really. Do not have negative thoughts because a lot of the times it displays the negativity in your own mind. You know, they say a dirty mind thinks dirty. So even when someone is speaking very clean, you know, they have a little cloud that pops up above their heads and their thoughts are all within that cloud. And they're bad thoughts. Why? Because a dirty mind thinks very dirty. This is why Allah is telling us, do not have negative suspicion. You rather have positive suspicion. Like we see sometimes people sitting on their mobile phones and you come into the masjid and say, hey, this guy here is on his mobile phone in the masjid, but he's reading Quran. You may not know. Relax. And then sometimes you have a person with a Quran, sitting with his Quran wide open, and in there he's got a mobile phone with games, playing games. So you might not know what's going on. Still, the one with the Quran open, it's between him and Allah. You must think he's reading Quran. The one with the mobile phone continue thinking that he's doing something that is beneficial for him. Why do we need to think negative? This is what is drawing us away from our own peace and contentment. Because you think negative of others, believe me, they begin to think negative of you. So what happens? The whole world becomes a negative place. We need to be positive. We need to be people who think good about one another so that tomorrow we will also be thought good of. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Look at how powerful the verses of this, this surah is. Would anyone think that Allah has really revealed verses with such detail telling us how to live amongst one another? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا 
Don't spy on one another. It's got nothing to do with you. Don't spy on one another. For what? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from eavesdropping. You know, people sometimes enjoy it. It's a pastime for them. They go and fix up little CCTVs and cameras and they eavesdrop. They have some recording and so on. For what? Leave them. It's between them and Allah. Yes, if it is something that concerns you, you may confront them and so on. May Allah protect us. May Allah grant us goodness. We need to stay away from this type of activity. You spy on someone, they spy on you. And what happens? There is hatred in your heart. And there is hatred in theirs. Allahu Akbar. Look at how we are dealing with the cleansing of the heart. So take away this issue of eavesdropping and spying and so on. We ask Allah to protect us. Then Allah says, وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا And do not backbite one another. Don't talk bad about someone in their absence. May Allah protect us all, every one of us, the speaker included, needs to be more conscious of this. One narration says, backbiting is worse than committing adultery. When you commit adultery, you ask Allah's forgiveness. When you've engaged in backbiting, you need to ask that person's forgiveness as well. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us from all types of sin. Remember this. He who can protect himself from backbiting is one who has definitely a rank far higher than the ones who do not do the same definitely may allah protect us remember backbiting is to mention that about your fellow brother or sister had they been there they would not have liked it but you mentioned it in their absence they wouldn't have liked it that is backbiting and with backbiting allah says would you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother no, so then stop backbiting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked a question. And this is what a lot of people say. When you say, brother, don't backbite. They say, but it's true. Have you heard that? When you say, brother, don't backbite. They say, but it's true. If it is true, it is backbiting. If it is not true, it is a slander, which is worse than backbiting. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked the same question. O Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ara'ayta in kana fihi ma aqul, what, what if what I'm saying is in the man and I'm telling the truth? So the Muhammad sallallahu said, if it is true, it is backbiting. If it is not true, then it is a slander, which is far worse than backbiting. So stay away from the lives of others. That's the message we are getting here tonight. Concentrate on your own life. Be happy. If you want to involve in someone else's life, involve positively or stay away. That's how you achieve peace. But the minute we involve in the other one's life and this one's life, we have forgotten about ourselves. This is why the hadith says, Tuba liman shagalahu aibuhu an ayubin nas. Give good news to he whose own weaknesses keep him occupied from involving in the weaknesses of others. May Allah help us so we can work on our own weaknesses. Brothers and sisters, we have so many weaknesses that if we were to work on our weaknesses 24-7, a whole lifetime would pass and we'd still be working on our own weaknesses. So the moment we are engaged in the lives of others, we have another major weakness to be dealing with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Really, these are words of Divine words of wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's up to us to put them into practice. And remember one thing, like I said a few days ago, when we have a bad habit, we need to firstly identify it, admit it, and then work very hard to eradicate it. So if you have an anger problem, for example, without you working hard on your temper, it's not going to, nothing's going to happen to it. It's not going to go anywhere. If you have a problem of backbiting, without you becoming conscious of it and engaging in perhaps the dhikr of Allah or walking away from perhaps gatherings which are engaged in this type of speech, you're not going to go anywhere. We need to do something about it. We need to work hard and we need to spread it amongst all of us. Stop backbiting. We don't want to hear this and so on. May Allah protect us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares the greatness of His in the fact that He has created us all different sizes and shapes and different peoples and tribes in order that we recognize one another. Listen to what he says in verse number 13 of Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhannas, O people, this is addressing the Muslims, the non-Muslims, all people. 
إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم الله أكبر O oh people we have created you from a single male and female and we have made from them so many different clans and tribes we have made you into peoples and tribes we have different races today we have so many different types of people we have people who are living in different parts of the world all this is a gift of allah he says the reason why we have created you totally different from one another is so that you can get to know one another so you can know one another this meaning or this word know one another is so broad that to start off with even within one race or within one type of people every single person is completely different from the other from the beginning of creation right up to the end your iris different your thumbprint your fingerprints different the way your hair grows different every single zebra has different stripes every giraffe has different spots do you know that totally different no two of those animals can be identical even those whom we call identical twins have differences so allah says so that you can be recognized you know when you come on the day of judgment you can't say hey you know what that must have been a mistake it was him you can't say that you are totally different allahu akbar may allah protect us Allah has made us different and he says we get to know each other some of the races are more powerful than others some of them perhaps might be more intelligent than others all this is a gift of Allah imagine if every one of us was identical when you get married it would only be what's the number plate may Allah protect us Allahu Akbar may Allah protect us really but Allah has made it so interesting for us where we don't go by numbers we go by names if you look at the motor vehicles that look identical, they go by numbers. Why? Because Toyota so and so, mashallah, there are so many of them, we now need numbers. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good use of our motor vehicles. But my brothers and sisters, appreciate the difference. Let us not look down upon another because we feel that these are inferior due to their race or their financial standing or where they are from in the world. Sometimes what happens is you meet a person. I'm going to give you a typical example it might hit some very very hard but let's listen to it sometimes you meet a person and they dress quite well and you greet them how are you what's happening oh i'm fine everything okay and after a while you know you had a good time and you know that this person is extremely intelligent whatever work you had mashallah was achieved and then you ask them brother where do you live now you one of the top shots you live in a top area you know top area so everything is okay mashallah subhanallah and then what happens he happens to tell you i live in the township and suddenly your face drops and you look at him from head to toe and after that your whole perception of that person changes that is ignorance that is jahiliya wallahi we do not judge people based on where they stay and what type of a house they live in some of the most beautiful people live under a tree my brothers and sisters may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautify us and some of those who have the worst of habits live in mansions may allah protect us and our offspring and may allah make us from those who can work on our own qualities to become better people let's hear what happened or let's listen to what was said today put it into practice and inshallah we will achieve peace